Hey, hey, everybody, I'm here with a quick video on Diddy, Sean Combs, Puffy, um, Brother Love, whichever name you want to call him by. What they're saying is a Combs curse. Yes, they're calling it the Combs curse. And why? Because they said so many people connected to Puffy, Diddy, Brother Love, they mysteriously either get uh, unalived or their life is cut short by some mystery illness, or they got locked up and they're in prison. And they said, if you put the pieces of the puzzles together, all roles lead back to Sean, Puffy, Brother Love, Diddy Combs. Now, is it a coincidence that there's so many people in his life that seem to just be fine one day and the next day, they're gone. Is it a coincidence that so many people in trouble with him? They all of a sudden may be part of a drive-by or some unfortunate thing where they're unalive. Is it a coincidence that people connected to him seem to find themselves behind bars when he's on the other side doing eight? 10, 15, maybe 20 to life bids? Is it the Combs curse? Or is it just he knows a lot of people and anybody who knows a lot of people, these things are bound to happen. Listen, guys, we're going to get more into this story right after this. <laughs> All right, everyone, let me go ahead and share my screen. So the Combs curse. Diddy's record labels marked by unalivings, untimely deaths, and people just going to prison. The Combs, the curse of Combs may finally be catching up with Diddy. At the initial success, the two record labels associated with Diddy have both collapsed during a spiral involving murder, uh, uh, death, and imprisonment. And Combs himself is now in the crosshairs of the law at the federal law enforcement raids on his homes in Los Angeles and Miami in the wake of a number of stunning lawsuits accusing him of sexual misconduct. The rap, um, the rapid, um, hold on one sec. The rapid um, ascent of Diddy, a former backup dancer, began when he started as an intern at Uptown Records in 1990 at the age of 20 and was recruited by CEO Andre Harrell to work with their growing stable of young artists. The launching In launching Uptown, Harrell also tapped um, assistant Kim Porter to handle a variety of affairs as the button label signed a young Yonkers rapper named Heavy D as his first act. Now, I did not know, or maybe I just didn't remember, that's how Kim Porter met Diddy. And I know a lot of times in our life, we'd be thinking to ourselves, if only we can go back and turn back the hands of time. I know she would have probably, if it wasn't for her beautiful children, she'd probably be like, I wish I never met Diddy. With rap's popularity um, being um, beginning to um, emerge, the company had a string of successful releases and appeared primed to entrench itself as an industry power. Diddy himself was vital in molding the um, popularity of several emerging um, stars, including Mary J. Blige and the R&B group 
Jodeci. Now, I will say this. I want to say Mary J. Blige, she dated somebody from Jodeci. And if you remember, according to Mary J., that relationship was hostile, filled with uh, uh, drugs, violence, and everything else, according to Mary J. Blige. But when Harrell would later part ways with Combs over business and created differences in 1993, and the ambitious Diddy would go on to form the label he became synonymous with, Bad Boy Records. And honey, they say it's all in the name. They tell you, watch what you name your kids, watch what you call yourself, watch the name you call others. And I know people love that theory, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Words hurt. And you can manifest something with your words. And boy, did he manifest this bad boy life. Okay? Just like Should Knight manifested with his record label name, Death Row Records. But we'll continue on because that's the story for another day. It's all in the name. Tragically, the key originators of Uptown, Harrell, Porter, and Heavy D, whose real name was Dwight Myers, will all later die untimely deaths. And listen, you know, the older you get, the, the, the older you say younger is, if I'm making sense to y'all. Yeah, when I was real young, I was like, oh my God, they 40? Ooh, now at 54, I'm like, oh, they only 40? Are they only uh, uh, 50 or whatever? Y'all get what I'm trying to say. But anyway, Heavy D um, passed away after collapsing in front of his Beverly Hills home at the age of 44 in 2011 from a pulmonary embolism that stemmed from a blood clot in his leg. Now, Heavy D, he was heavy. And no one thought the wise. Is it a possibility that someone that perhaps is, you know, on the heavier side, maybe they're not eating right, maybe they're not taking care of themselves and they're torn a lot and they're flying a lot. Because you have to be careful when you're flying a lot back and forth when it comes to these pulmonary embolisms. So was that plausible to understand that perhaps this is what happened to him and he died? It is. Depending upon where the embolism went, did it block his heart artery? Son? I don't know. But a lot of people are now looking back at all of these people that had a, a misfortunate, untimely death and saying, hmm. Hmm, is that so or could it have been something else? Paulin, who had a volatile relationship with Diddy and bore him three children, died at the age 47 in 2018 in California. She had been suffering full life symptoms for days before her passing, and a medical examiner concluded that she suffered from pneumonia. Now, let me say this. Um, Kim Porter, it appeared, you, listen, you never know just by looking at somebody if they're really healthy or not. You, you just don't know. Whether you're big, skinny, small, or whatever. You know, my doctor said, you know, call me the skinny fat. What does she mean by that is that, you know, my blood work numbers are were horrible, horrible. And I'm still working on them to this day. Horrible, although I may not appear to be, you know, that big or whatever, and I exercise or whatever, the numbers are horrible. So my inside is telling a different story and you got to get it together. So I'm saying this, you know, with a grain of sword that um, Kim Porter just seemed like she appeared to really eat right, take care of herself. Or maybe she was just naturally small. But the healthier you are and you may encounter some illness like the flu, pneumonia, whatever, the better chance you stand of surviving said illness. It just seemed weird that Kim at 47 um, would catch the flu and not survive it. I don't know, but you know, again, they're saying the Combs curse and all these people under the Combs umbrella that just seem to have had these untimely deaths or situations happen to them. Harrell himself would pass in 2020 at the age 59 in West Hollywood, California. His ex-wife said at the time that he died from heart failure. There you go, a heart attack. Like a heavy day. Um, uh, and you know, there was another member in the um, Heavy D and the Boys group. And I think that he died before Heavy D. He was pretty young. Now, um, I got a cousin from Mount Vernon. Um, heavy D and the Boys originally from Mount Vernon. I remember when I would say both those funerals, like the lines was wrapped around blocks and blocks to um, celebrate the life of these two. But I want to say the dancer, 
And they said on the stage, took a misstep and, you know, fell off the stage and didn't survive it. But we carry on. I was one of the boys. And I want to say after that, Heavy D started doing stuff solo. And all of them, they said, really suffered um, mentally as a result of the one dancer dying from Heavy D and the boys. Um, another earlier pillar at Hup, um, Uptown Records, singer I'll Be Sure, who also dated Kim, Kim Porter, suddenly suffered renal failure in 2022, was intubated and fell into a coma for two months. The Boston crooner, whose real name is Albert Brown, had a liver transplant and fully recovered. Now, I will say this. The, the, usually, unless you got some condition that you know about ahead of time, and there aren't sometimes, that's why I encourage people to do your yearly exams, get your blood work, because sometimes you can have something festering in your body and you don't know, and it gets so bad that it's at that point. But usually people don't just wake up in renal failure. They don't. But we'll carry on. And, you know, and I'll be sure recently came out and he said pretty much he's writing a book. He's going to um, produce his life story. And he said, well, you're going to we're all going to get to know why that incident really happened to him and why he was really in uh, um, renal um, failure. And he said, and then y'all be able to call Homeland Security for real. That's why I'll be sure it's simple. We're going to continue. Is it the Combs curse? Or it just so happens that Diddy knows a lot of people. And as a result, some of these people are suffering things that anybody else would suffer as a natural course in life. The Bad Boy label, after initially vaulting at global a renowned based largely on the strength of rap and more notorious B.I.G., and Diddy's savvy guidance, will also suffer through a strain of deaths and in criminal investigations. The Burley Brooklyn rapper Biggie, whose real name was Christopher Wallace, was pow powed unalived in Los Angeles drive by pow powing at the age of 24 in 1997 during an ongoing coastal war with California rappers, most notably Tupac Shakur, who was unalived or, um, the, um, the, year, the year earlier. Born Bronx rhymer Craig Mack, another early bad boy standout, died at the age of 47 in 2018 in South Carolina from heart failure, not a heart attack, and having in, embraced Christianity and working with a ministry there. East Harlem bad boy artist Black Rob, whose real name was Rob Ross, died in 2021 at the age of 52 from cardiac arrest, another heart problem, in Atlanta after being homeless and suffering several strokes. Oh, I think what happens a lot too in this world, I mean, I don't know how Diddy's body is handling it, allegedly, right? Because in all of these suits, they allege about the amount of, I'm going to call them street pharmaceutical stuff that they use. And they're saying Diddy uses a ton of it. His body must be made of steel, because how is he surviving it? And it's like these others fall victim to it, right? And they suffer really bad. So several other artists on the label's rosters were in prison too after being charged with a variety of crimes. The most notable among them was Belize-born rapper Shine, who served eight years in prison after being convicted of a nightclub pow powing incident that involved Diddy and his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez. A jury convicted Shine of um, pow pow in three, um, you know, time during the crime after the bad boy contingent had an argument with another club attendee. See, living up to the name, bad boy entertainment. Mm -mm. Diddy, his close friend and bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones, also faced charges stemming from the incident, but were acquitted in a subsequent, a, a, a sensational, um, case, which gripped New York at the time. While he survived the criminal case, Jones was later pow powed and unalive at the confrontation outside of Atlanta nightclub in 2003. Now, um, former bad boy rapper T um, Tavell, um Coleman GD, who also um, caught to a 1993 cold case unalive and outside a housing project in 2010, had his 15 years to life sentence commuted last year by a New York governor. Now, I want to say this. This um, bodyguard, Anthony Wolf, the streets are talking. 
They're saying that Justin, Diddy's oldest son, Justin Combs, belongs to this Anthony Wolf. It seems like, you know, these are all accusations. So allegedly, it seems like Diddy has an obsession, an obsession with other people's children. He got OPC. So allegedly, Justin Combs belonged to this guy. He was the biological father. That's what the streets are saying. And you know, once somebody puts something in your mind, your mind starts to make it like, say, oh, this could be true. And saying if you put Justin on um, picture next to this Anthony Wolf, that's who Justin Combs looks like. But either way, did he raise them? And that's that. And he knows that he has that. Another former bad boy, Akamar, known as the rapper Loon, served seven years for, um, you know, doing being a street pharmacist before he was granted an early release in 2020 during the COVID-19 crisis. Several high-profile entertainers, including Snoop and Mary J. Vaz, lobby for his release. As for the latest issues for Combs, his lawyers has ripped the actions as baseless, a baseless witch hunt and said he is innocent of the swirl of accusations now encircling him. Whew. Listen, these are names and places and things that, you know, many people, I guess, are willing to speak of. Look at the young Kim Porter and Diddy, so innocent. And allegedly she went through a lot similar to Cassie. And then when Cassie came along, she got some relief. And then Cassie took the brunt of everything. All I can say, guys, is um, they're speaking to people, but they need some information that they can stand on and it will be concrete, concrete enough for them to issue a, a warrant out for his arrest. What do you think about this Combs curse? Is it so or is it not so? Is it just that he's a man that knows a lot of people and as a result, there's going to be some people that are going to die of a heart attack? or perhaps have an untimely death from some other unfortunate situation. Chat with me in the comments, guys, and when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Everybody, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts, guys, on all of these little breadcrumbs that seem to all rolls, no matter where you pick up the crumb, it seems to lead back to Diddy. Anyway, guys, chat with me. I'll chat back. You know, there's one of the cases, there is an unnamed third assailant that um, the, the accuser, the Jane Doe, is saying was friends with Diddy in Aaron Hall. Could it be the late Andre Harrell? And maybe that's why the Jane Doe didn't want to name the name because she wants the, uh, the dead to rest in peace. I don't know. But chat with me, guys. And when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.